Hi everybody, Nigel here with you. Nigel's Land Landry. No, it's not Nigel's Landry channel, it's Nigel's Mustang channel, isn't it? Um, and welcome back. If you're a new subscriber, thank you very much. There's been a few new ones lately. So thanks very much for joining in. Um, so today we're going to talk and do this oil cooler thing. Uh, so if you remember, I spoke before about the UK right-hand drive Mustang oil cooler issue. And here is the oil cooler. Here it's off now. And this is basically it. The oil goes in the top and out the bottom or vice versa i'm not sure but it basically goes in one of these holes and out the other and passes through i don't know if you can see but inside there there is a matrix and outside you can see it all sort of i don't know if it's soldered brazed or what it is it's just bleh. um and these fail so very very small percentage i think it's one percent or something but you know there's always that chance and it doesn't seem to be, I have mentioned this before, but for those that haven't seen that video, it doesn't seem to be related to whether your car is old, new, um, driven hard, tracked, driven gently, hardly driven, loads of miles. It seems they just go, um, you know, and when they go, basically they will either spew all the oil out on the, onto the road, they will spew all the coolant out onto the road, or worse, they will mix the oil and the water together. And as I explained before, which a lot of people I don't think they think about, you know, and they realise when you know, they talk about these oil cooler failures. Biggest problem is you've got, you know, when the engine's running normal temperature, you've got sort of 12, 18, 20 PSI in your coolant system. You'll have 60, 80, 100 PSI in your oil system, okay? So you've got, in here, you have got a ticking time bomb. You've got 18 to 20 PSI of hot water, and you've got 80 to 100 PSI of hot oil all mixed together in this sort of, as you can see, lightly brazed together, whatever it is, aluminium matrix. And the problem is, if it goes, say you're on the motorway, you're blasted to London on the motorway, you're 80 mile an hour on any M4, and it goes. Okay, you won't know anything about it. Now you may, if it goes suddenly and chucks it on the road, you'll see an oil light come on, if you're lucky, you'll catch it. Um, if it goes, let's talk about the water and the oil mixing. If it chucks the oil into the coolant system or you get a rupture between the oil and the coolant system, obviously the higher pressure is going to win. And the oil being at 80 PSI, whatever, 60 PSI, over the 18 to 20 PSI in your coolant system, the oil is going to rush into the coolant system. Okay, it's going to pump in there. I don't know if you've ever seen what these oil pumps pump at. I remember looking years ago and it was something like 10 gallons a minute. So probably this one's probably 20 gallons a minute. So it's recirculating the engine, you've got two gallons of oil in there and it's recircling that oil around the engine 10 times a minute, you know, so you can imagine the flow rate. So what happens is that oil rushes into the coolant system, fills your coolant system up with oil. So obviously now your coolant system has become ineffective and it just chucks it all out, okay? Because your coolant system is not designed to withhold 80 PSI or 60 PSI of oil pressure. So it chucks it all out. So the first thing you see is a load of steam and crap and whatever coming out from the end of the bonnet. So, oh my God, you pull over, pull over to the hard shoulder and you turn the engine off. When you turn the engine off, what happens? You have no oil pressure, but now you have 18 to 20 PSI or more of coolant pressure because you've now got coolant and oil in your coolant system. So that one now rushes back through the hole into your engine. So that's it. And then the worst thing is if you're not a very experienced guy, you might see nothing under the bonnet and think, well, it's just overheated. I'll just let it cool down and drive again. And as soon as you turn your engine over, you've blasted a load of water around your coolants, around your oil system, and you've probably just killed your engine. So that's the worst case scenario. I don't want to scare anybody, but that is what could happen. So what I did with this one, I disconnected the coolant system. As you can see, I plugged it off um and then put a pipe in place to replace the actual lower coolant elbow where the pipes come off to go to this so then i had just had this running and i drove the car and i did a drive around 50 miles and drove it sort of give it a bit of a blast a bit of suburban driving and a bit of town driving and the gauge that's on the dash didn't move from didn't even reach vertical so it stayed on the cold side of vertical um, I have since found out that apparently there could be an algorithm that the engine uses. Why they do this, I don't know. What's wrong with a temperature gauge or a temperature sender? Um, so this is coolant temperature I'm talking now. So basically the coolant temperature, um, sorry, oil temperature, not coolant temperature, we're talking about the oil temperature is calculated by coolant temperature, engine speed, time and load. 
So that's how they calculate the oil temperature. But then somebody has now come on the 6G forums and said they've fitted a, an aftermarket oil cooler kit and they've noticed their oil takes longer to, to warm up. So maybe this won't affect the algorithm, I don't know. But what I'm doing now, I've got this plate. So basically, if you get the Mishimoto oil cooler kit, you get a plate to blank off where this used to fit. You take this off and then you fit this plate. Okay, and this is the Mishimoto plate. And in the bottom here, I've put a bung. I've had to machine down a bung, put a thread on there. It's M16 1.5 and put that in there with some thread sealer on it. And actually, I'm going to put my oil temperature sender in there from my cheap, nasty Argos, not Argos, um, Amazon uh, <laughs> um, temperature gauge, which is not good. Um, I've done a test on it this morning and in, in the kettle, I got the kettle boiling. So obviously the water's 100 degrees, um, put the sensor in there and the gauge went to like 85. But if you tip the gauge on its side, it would go up to nearly 100. So if you tip the gauge around, obviously it's got a balance weight in it. As you move the gauge around, the temperature goes up or down. So when it's in its correct vertical position, it's reading about 80 degrees when it should be 100. So I'll, I'll have it in the car tipped over to the right, because you know, sort of 90 degrees clockwise, then it's correct. So there you go. Um, but this plate, yeah, Mishimoto, you get it on eBay. It's about 36, 39 pound, I think. And it's bloody brilliant. Um, it's beautifully made. And that just bolts on. It's a very simple DIY job. All you've got to do is you've got these bolts around here. You can see you've got five bolts. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. They're all 8 mil headed, are probably M5 bolts. Um, they might be M6, I think they're probably M5. Um, and then on the casting, I did, I've only just taken one off, I'll show you in a minute. On the casting, there's two O-rings. So you basically take that off, clean everything up, bolt this on, job done. Um, so the test I'm doing now is, do we need an oil cooler in our cars? And what I'm going to do is eradicate this thought that you know, um, is there an algorithm that's controlling the temperature gauge? I might put this temperature gauge and find the oil's flying up to 120 degrees or something. I don't know. Uh, 120 degrees is okay, but it's not desirable. Um, the gauge has a massive green wide range on it. The, the range of Ford's normal is, I think, like 70 to 130 degrees and or 120 and then 130 to 140 is hot. And then 140, 150 is very hot. But I think there's stuff in the ECU that cuts cuts your power down if the oil gets really hot anyway. But my my what my trial is if you've got a car that you use for daily driving that you don't thrash the living daylights out of, that you don't take on a track, and you don't drive in, you know, it's always over 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 odd degrees centigrade, then do you need an oil cooler? I think the answer is probably no. I don't think you do. Um, so let's see. Uh, I know that one car I know doesn't have an oil cooler is a Toyota GT86. Uh, that's with the FA20 engine. And we know that that car has, um, you know, has a highly strung little two litre boxer engine and that has no oil cooler. So do we need one? Probably not. I personally think this is a heat exchanger. I did mention this in my last video. Someone else has commented the same on the Mustang 60 forums. I personally think this is designed to heat the oil up faster. Why would you have a an oil cooler that's got water at 90 degrees running through it when you're trying to cool oil that's about 90 degrees you know unless they think the oil's going to get really hot so that's the test we're going to do so i'm going to get this bolted on now i'm going to show you the what it looks like first with it out on and then i'm going to take the car to, for a drive i think tomorrow a nice long drive and see what happens so let's get to the car and i'll show you what this looks like with it all taken off okay so now we can see we've got the phone actually resting on the subframe. Uh, so we can see now we've got here, the point out we've got the two big O-rings. There's the two rubber O-rings that seal. These are the oil passages that feed oil through the, from the, through the uh, casing. This casting here is actually underneath the left-hand exhaust manifold or header. If you're in America wondering what it is, this is what they do to us in America, in England on the right-hand drive cars and Australia. They put this big, big casting that comes all the way back from the oil filter at the front, comes back to the oil cooler and then feeds the oil back up through. And this actually forms a spacer for the engine mount as well. So if you want to get rid of it, like I am, you need a left-hand drive engine mount as well for the left-hand side, which I have. And I have now ordered the oil takeoff plate so I can put a remote filter on her as well. So basically you've got here, there's the two holes, you've got the two O-rings, and then we've got the bolts going around the outside there. The um, the bolt hole at the front, oh no, it's not, there's a bolt hole in the plate, isn't it? There's actually a, a wire here, you can see there's a wire hanging down here. If I can show you, 
I can't get it into, sc into screen, there it is. There's a wire hanging down and that basically is clipped in there. I'm not sure what that's for. I think it's for a sensor or something. So, um, so that's basically that. So all we're going to do is bolt that plate over there and the oil now will feed directly from between these two holes rather than going through a matrix. So that's the whole idea of the objective is to get rid of that bloody horrible oil cooler. So we'll get it bolted on and we'll see what it looks like. And there you can see it guys all fitted up there either underneath the car. <laughs> My neck's straight if my voice sounds a bit funny. But it's very really dark as well. So there we are, I just got the bolts around the outside all done up. I've got my uh, temperature sender in there, as you can see. I haven't wired it up yet. I'm going to run the wire temporarily along along the um, along the front subframe here and then in through the door, you know, up behind the plastic, up behind the plastic wheel arch liner here and then in through the door. So it'll be on there for a couple of days. And then, uh, so I'll put an eyelet on here, whether it through, and then I'm just going to wire the... Um, the actual gauge into the uh, cigarette lighter. So that is basically that. The only thing is a bit of a warning, uh, a bit of a downside with this. The, as I say, these holes at the back here, I don't know if you can see them, where my finger's pointing now, I don't think you can see them up there. There they are there. Okay, I point, there you are. If I get a hand out of the way, you can see them. That's this plastic plug here. It is designed to go into those holes. And obviously the other plate is thinner than this one. So it doesn't lock in there very well. So I've just cable tied this cable up there out of the way so um so that's just cabled up onto that cable tied up onto that earth cable there as you can see make sure it doesn't fall down because we don't want to get on the exhaust which is really close so uh there we are i'm not going to worry about that for now because uh, this is going to be gone soon so um there we are so i'll get the uh, gauge wired up and we'll see how we go okay so here we are we're in the car as you can hear i actually do have a mustang here you go <laughs> that's proof um so Done the little test. I was going to go for like a 30, 40, 50 mile drive and see what it's like. Uh, I didn't need to. It needs like a two mile drive. Um, I'm going to flip, turn the camera off, flip it around so you can see the dashboard and I can show you the temperature gauge. And then we'll go from there. Uh, but I have literally just done 12 miles. Um, I have done, so, so we you get this before we actually look at the results. Uh, I did like a dual carriageway for sort of a mile and then through the, the, the village they call it, it's like a bloody town now, but through the village, um, which is like 30 mile an hour, stop, start, stop, start, got the roundabouts and stuff. Um, then popped into the supermarket to get some beer, yes. So it was stopped then for about you know, 10, 15 minutes and then left the supermarket, went back down through the village um, and then jumped on the motorway. Did like a, a three miles to the next junction and then three miles back up and then along the dual carriageway home. So sort of, you know, 50, 60, 70 mile an hour on the dual carriageway, 30 miles through town, you know, three miles down the dual carriageway, five miles, six miles through town and then three miles back and forth on the motorway 80 I strictly stuck to 80 mile an hour so you can see and I've just got home I haven't turned the engine off so the oil temperature is pretty much stay because it has no cooling capability it will pretty much stay at that temperature for a long long time so I'm going to turn the camera around now and show you what the results are it's not good okay so here's the highly professional setup you can see it's connected up via the cigarette lighter um, can't believe these cars actually come with a cigarette lighter and an ashtray <laughs> and then as you can see the gauge here is sat in the in the cup holder and then I've got the wire going up into the glove compartment it comes through the plastic wheel arch liner in through the doorway uh, I got it tucked in behind the rubber and then it's sort of just sitting in the, in the glove compartment there as you can see so basically this is the setup and it's a temporary setup so the first thing I'm going to do is show you the gauge. Now, if you remember last week I did the drive and I said that the gauge was absolutely fine. The oil temperature didn't, it didn't even reach, you know, vertical. It's sort of there, it's pointing at the T. I think last week it sort of just got just below the U. So, you know, one would assume everything is fine. Then somebody told me about the algorithm that the um, engine actually uses. That's central, so it looks good. Um, yes, 1,824 miles. This is a 2017 car that I bought new. It's never seen rain. <laughs> um, so basically, yeah, um, there is the temperature gauge. So after that drive I've just explained, you know, you would assume everything is fine. So you'd be tanking off down the motorway, whatever. 
driving around town doing whatever it is you do and you think there's absolutely no issue why has it got a cooler as I said all along um, so you have that horrible oil cooler thing over there which is on the bench um, so that thing there has got water going through it in 90 degrees and that is supposed to keep the oil temperature down um, and it does because if you remember I told you about this gauge and the gauge if I hold it over so that it's clicked over to the right it gives a pretty accurate reading and there it is okay so what I found if you turn this gauge like this as you can see it will change it's not the angle you're looking at it I keep it square to the front of the camera you can see it actually changes with how you actually hold the hold the thing it's not the perspective it's not like I'm looking at it like this and then looking at it like that it's you can see that it actually changes temperature and I found that in a boiling kettle the needle was sort of just above that 95 degrees so I'm assuming that when it's like that it's reading correctly and as you can see one would assume if you've got 120 and 150 in the middle there is 135 I'm guessing so the oil is actually currently around 135 140 degrees now if anything this gauge reads low so it's probably more like 140 degrees after that little journey and it ain't cooling down um, it sort of went to 120 on the dual carriageway this is something else I was going to say I was wondering about thermostats because thermostatic control valves and oil system I don't like them um, I don't like having moving parts in there, you know, additional moving parts if you like, with springs and balls and stuff. I don't think you need a thermostatic control valve on these cars because literally the oil was up at 120 degrees within the first two miles of driving, literally. And that was gentle, I mean I don't wrap my car when it's when it's cold. Um, that was just gentle, normal, you know, two and a half, three thousand rev through the gears. Um, this is a manual, this car, any way to be. Uh, so there we go so uh, yeah I'm afraid it's bad news guys these cars do need an oil cooler um, so I am now gonna have to get one the other thing I would say this thing is utter and total crap uh, from, it reads wrong okay I know that when it's boiling 100 degrees is around you know it's, if you look at it like this it's about 95 degrees 92 degrees and then when you tip it on its side it goes to about 100 so you know, I can only check I don't have any means of checking anything other than a hundred so we assume that if that's if that's sort of correct around there then it's correct around here as well we have to assume but um, it's certainly a lot hotter than 100 degrees we know that so I'm now gonna um, I think I might check it again when I take it out but yeah it's such a crap the bloody the sensor leaks so it's I'm gonna send it back actually it's just crap so um, there we go. Well, I might just keep it for future reference or whatever. We'll see. But uh, yeah, it's not good news, guys. So there we have it. There's our bad news for the day. It's um, not good, is it? Not great. Uh, so basically, we need a cooler. So um, those of us that think we didn't need one, like I've been saying all along, um, certainly if you want to run your oil cooler than 130 140 degrees all day then we definitely need one god knows what it'd be like in the summer or if it was in stop you know if, if you i mean to be, to be fair though i've been idling now for a good 10 minutes and it it hasn't really dropped um, it's still up on the 135 so basically we'll turn it off and uh there we go so oil cooler at the ready uh, i've bought a um, oil filter relocation kit. I've bought a fancy thing that takes a K&N cartridge rather than having the, the spin on. So that should be a nice little addition to the car. And I'm going to put it down in the front left wheel well, uh, down in front of the stone guard, down in there. So it makes oil changes a lot easier. I've, I've, I've only changed the oil on this once. And, um, well, I've only changed the filter once. I've changed the oil two or three times. Uh, I've only changed the filter once. I've got a K&N filter on at the moment. And I didn't enjoy it very much. I'm, I'm very fussy about cleanliness. And I don't like oil running everywhere. And it's pretty not impossible to get it out without having oil running everywhere. So, uh, you know, but it wasn't designed as a right-hand drive car. And I thank Ford for doing it in right-hand drive. I thank you very, very much. So, anyway, there we go. So, uh, I'll see you all soon for another video. Uh, I'm going to start doing some stuff with the rear end next, I think. But uh, I think that's going to be it now, though. It's going to get put away for the winter. I'm certainly not going to drive it around with oil temperatures like that. It's not doing it any good at all. So um, I shall see you all soon. Bye for now.